Paso entonces a presentar al honorable ministro de Equidad, Justicia Social y Empoderamiento de Santa Lucía, don Joachim Henry. Usted tiene la palabra. Thank you very much. Good morning, Your Excellencies, Ministers. Of course, let me share with you St. Lucia's experience um, on the issue of multidimensional poverty. Um, in speaking to this, I would highlight briefly what is going on in St. Lucia, how we have approached um, poverty in St. Lucia. Um, secondly, I would like to tell you where we are as it relates to understanding multidimensional poverty and the response of the government. Um, and in a, in a more significant way, share with you what the government is doing in terms of the response. Um, okay, this. Yes, um, as it relates to our country poverty survey, um, from 1995, we have invested in having our country, country poverty survey, and of course, we have attempted to maintain um, measuring our population and their vulnerability, you know, within the space of five to ten years. We've not always been on, on time with measuring it, but through the Caribbean Development Bank, we have continued to invest in measuring, um, understanding that if we don't measure, we cannot target. What is important about, I, I find interesting about our data as it relates to poverty, we have maintained a poverty level throughout 40 years since our independence of 1979, ranging between 25 to 28% of our population, and of course seeing fluctuation in um, indigents or extreme poverty. We introduced in 2016 the whole issue of multidimensional poverty, and of course when I looked at the ECLAC um, report on the economy of St. Lucia, one would observe notwithstanding our poverty levels has remained the same generally over 40, 50 years, we have seen that our GDP has grown the trend on that it is growing. It means that our interventions over the years in terms of our social protection initiatives, our investment in our social policy has not changed and of course has now brought the discussion about generational wealth into the discussion. So, we have looked at the issue of multidimensional poverty and looking at the various aspects of deprivation. And of course, consistent with what I've heard um, from the other presenters, um, the area of health, housing, education um, stands strongly as, as um, strong indicators affecting our population in terms of moving or graduating from poverty. In this regard, the government of St. Lucia, my Prime Minister, has moved aggressively in launching what we consider to be the youth economy or establishing, establishing a statutory organization specifically directed at young people business, of course, and in his own words, trans, um, converting hobbies into business. I think we could move on to the next slide. one is with me. Yes, yes um, I think I've spoken to this, but um, before I move to conclusion, let me just highlight what is the response of the government as it relates to the issue of poverty and the multidimensional and the various deprivations. So the first important response is that seeing that there's a high incidence of poverty among young people, our prime minister has launched the youth economy and have invested in um, significant resources um, for a youth economy or a statutory organization where young people have access to grants and loans to transfer their hobbies into business. In addition to that, the Prime Minister has invested significantly in micro-business. This last year and, and um, this year, we have seen significant investment into micro-businesses and of course, this is placed at the Development Bank through the Ministry of Commerce, again, to allow 
single mothers and vulnerable population who want to participate in the economy um, to at least have access to funding. A very important initiative is the correlation between education and poverty and generational wealth. We have decided that each home by policy must have a university graduate and therefore the government of St. Lucia has directed its policy of education to ensure that in St. Lucia every house, all households must have a university graduate um, in terms of um, ensuring that the, the issue of um, education and the, the issue of generational wealth is realized. Importantly, the issue of universal health care, and this year the government has advanced or launched its uni universal health care policy and progressively increased, putting into the basket of health services, um, services that's directed at the poor population. And in this regard, this year we have launched prenatal care for pregnant mothers, as well as um, senior citizens receive support, medical support in St. Lucia. And on the social protection side, the government has increased support for the elderly. Um, so we have on a daily basis persons employed providing direct home care to senior persons. We have increased our cash transfer of public assistance. We have increased support throughout our educational support. Um, that's in addition to the one university graduate per household. Our food support through food vouchers that is a regular support for vulnerable population. Um, we have maintained our COVID income support. So in addition to having the public assistance pro program, understanding the impact of COVID on the population, we have um, in place income support for persons who are affected by COVID. Um, health assistance, in fact, the government support a number of persons who receive health outside of St. Lucia, the Cabinet of Ministers approve and we pay directly from our bill to ensure that some persons, especially where life-saving interventions are needed and it's not available in St. Lucia, the government of St. Lucia provide this support. Um, we continue to support our short-term employment program as well as critically our housing assistance program. This is critical um, towards providing support and trying to close the gap between persons who are disadvantaged through poverty and taking into consideration the multidimensional aspect of poverty. But of course, notwithstanding we're from a very small island, the issue of the, geograph the geography of poverty stands and we are also looking at transportation and how it affects persons who are accessing services on, um, because of course the, the, the city of Castries is placed in one location and persons have to move towards accessing even some of the, the support that is available. So advocacy is critical in terms of um, um, responding to the issue of uh, mul the multidimensional of poverty and therefore we encourage our partners to continue to highlight and to bring to the front the issues that affect our population, our poor populations. In the case of St. Lucia, we, we looked at education, um, the environment and um, household connectivity. We also looked at um, employment. We looked at health, um, living standards generally, where you look at um, um, assets, household assets. And of course, we included the environment and climate change vulnerability. Um, that was critical because of the impact of natural disaster and the risk of the population in falling back into poverty. So for, in fact, um, just as I'm here this morning, um, cabinet just called in preparation for us, a storm of for approaching storm. We are constantly every year dealing with this issue of climate change and the impact on our population. So it's included in, the, in developing the, the, the whole indices on our poverty, which was not considered previously. Thank you. Time. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Me parece que ha hecho observaciones.